rod cap off. Connecting rod bearings. Connects it to the crankshaft. You can see the scoring on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not good. Time to replace it. And then you inspect the journal here. Let's see if you got some. And you got some stuff here. See how it's dull? Mm-hmm. Run your fingernail across. You can feel a little ridge there. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah, let's get this piston out of here. Shit through, along with the piston. And then you can see it, you feel it coming out, feel it coming out down here. Now I expect this top part of the piston to just sort of fall out in a separate piece. Yeah, and there it is, take a look at that. Oh my. It's cracked off. It's broken all the way apart. It sure is. Some of the rings, right above the rings. Boy, look at that. What a mess. That's pretty bad damage there. With us running the engine a little bit, that's how this little scoring and beating up occurred. Okay. That should be a whole piece, shouldn't it? Should be a whole piston. Let's get the rest of it out of there. Wow, well, that's a major failure there. That's really ugly. That's pretty ugly. Okay, wipe it out and see what we can see. Actually, it doesn't look bad. <laughs> it doesn't look as bad as I expected to see it. Yep, this bearing got chewed. And the thing is, you can't leave it that way. What do you do to it? Well, you can either grind it or maybe we can get away with just sanding it. Maybe we can do that. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, certainly we need new bearings to go on that. And. We'll have to take a look at the, get a better look at the cylinder wall to see what kind of damage we may be in for in there. Five more to pull out. We shall see. This is the this is the main shaft. Underneath here is the main bearing, okay, main uh, crankshaft bearing, and uh, the thing that the bearing sits in are called saddles. These are called caps. Uh, caps or yeah, I think they're called caps. Oh. Yeah, pretty decent. It's going to give you a little bit more resistance. It's not done yet. Oh, it's all. Oh, it bent. It didn't. It bent. No, it didn't. It just it just rolled because it's it's loose. It's on a it's on a bearing. Okay, then what you do is you support this up here like that. Put the blunt into your hammer right there. Yeah. Go straight down. And then catch it on the other side with your don't But I don't want to hit that Don't be afraid. Just go I ahead. don't want to hit that middle part, right? Don't worry about the bearing. It's gonna be replaced. Oh I can hit it. Yeah, you can hit the bearing. Okay. I can feel it. Uh huh. Now, now, if I can hit the bearing, tilt it that way, like yeah. that. Yeah. Keep going. Ah! You got it. Oh! Let's see. <laughs> I have a piston. Let's, let's take a look at it. Oh. That's the oil wiper. Oh, it's all squiggly. Yeah. That. That's. Let me show you. This is the oil wiper. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are two small rings, one on either side. And this little oil wiper holds the oil that, you know, sort of gre uh, greases or oils the cylinder. These here, these three right here are uh, I, compression rings. I didn't <clears throat> know those were loose. <clears throat> uh -huh. But take a look, bring it over here. Let's take a look at that. Let's wipe I this didn't out. know they were loose like that. Well, they're not loose once they're pressed inside the cylinder. They become really tight. 
but they're 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 made springy that's just to spring out like that so that they'll press firmly against the inside walls of the cylinder but yeah let's take a look at this there, piston what there's a what's in it to make it do that make it do what Spring. Squeeze, spring like a it? spring? It's just the way the this is the way the, the rings are made. They're made to spring out like that. But there's a not bit. a spring in it. No, oh. no, there's no spring in it. The spring action is just in the way they're made. Oh, this is not too bad. Let's okay. take a look at it. Turn it, turn it. Okay, you got a little bit of wear right there. See those lines? Mm -hmm. Keep going, and a little bit more there. Why oh, put more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one isn't too bad. Compared to the others, this one's probably the nicest There's looking. A gouge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at there. There's a little bit right there. And that's sort of where you see the wear normally on a piston is right in line with the rod, because of the way it it wiggles the piston around inside the cylinder. So, so Robert, what'd you learn tonight? Um. Well, I learned how to take out a piston. And I took off these things. I don't remember what they're called. But I took out the number six piston and we found out that we have this broken one and then the rest are not bad. They're kind of bad, but not bad. Good. It doesn't have a bad scratch on it. Yeah, some of these look all right. You, yeah. As you run your finger across them though, you can feel the ridges, mm -hmm. which means they've undergone some wear. Um, this one is, I think, this one here is probably the worst I've felt. You can see those on that one. No, this one's pretty bad too. You know, it may be a case where we have to grind the crank. In other words, uh, grind these surfaces down smooth again and then get a different set of bearings to uh, install and have freshen up the engine a little bit. What's that, this for? That uh, is a little a uh, sprocket comes off of there that runs the engine governor and also runs a hydraulic pump. Oh, that's that thing on the front end. This is the front end. That's the front end of the engine, uh-huh. But that's a timing gear. That's that's a cam timing gear. There's another <laughs> gear. <laughs> there's another gear directly behind here. That's the crank timing gear. And they touch each other and they push each other. And they are responsible for making sure that the engine is timed properly so that when the piston's up at the top, certain valves are closed you know and when it's down at the bottom other valves are open and that's a cam a cam it's shaft. called a cam shaft yeah this, shaft. this bar down here what is does a cam shaft do the cam shaft is responsible for opening and closing the intake and exhaust valves I'm kind of impressed because i thought it was going to be a lot worse i really don't know what i thought it was going to look like i thought those things didn't move but I don't know. I've All that moves. I've, I've never seen the inside of this mm -hmm. before. So I don't know what I really thought well, it was going to look the, like. The, they're staggered this way because they they run the pistons up and down at different intervals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. But I don't know what I thought it was going to look like. Mm. I don't know what I thought these were going to look like. I see. These are different than what I thought it would really be. Yeah. We need to pull these side pieces off with these yeah because they give us access to the valves and oh. so after we get the crankshaft off we'll turn the engine upright pull these plates off I'll pull that big plate off and we'll access the valves and we'll remove the valves and the valve springs and seats and stuff like that we'll take a look at them check them and see what kind of shape they're in did you have fun tonight I'm tired though. I know. I have to tell you, you made me start at midnight. <laughs>
the uh, crankshaft timing gear. Uh-huh. Does it look okay? Um, it's all worn. If you look closely at the teeth, you oh, can see I how see. they're kind of chewed over time. Uh-huh. The thing is, I don't think we'll find another one. If we do, it'd be really expensive. I mean, if it's working, it's not it's not going to affect the timing that badly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. chewed on a little bit. Huh. I think they'll be fine. See, they go together like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking this is a thrust bearing. Help me remember that this, these little pieces, face the inside. All right, let's zoom into this out. Oh, it just oh. came out. Well, sort of. Oh, that is heavy. Oh. Don't drop it. No, I'm not going to drop it. <laughs> The other seal. Okay. <laughs> These seals are just probably leaking like said. Okay. Well, that doesn't look bad, really. It leaves the open crankcase with the camshaft. I've got to flip the engine over and pull out the uh, valve. The valves, uh, the valve springs and the lifters, and then we'll be able to slide the camshaft out and take a look at it. Here are the cylinders, and I, I you know, I've turned the engine over here. And I've wiped out these cylinders so I can get a look at them. See what's going on with them. This is the number one cylinder where the uh, piston broke. If you look right there in the sun, you can see that scratching there. I think that's just from, uh, that's recent damage from when we were running it. Uh, things were banging around in there and got scratched up. But uh, looking uh, at the rest of this, I'm trying to figure out where, you know, exactly the problem began. And I'm... Uh, you know, with that kind of damage of the piston, I, I expected more scoring to the inside of the cylinder, and I do see some. I mean, there's a pretty good line, a couple lines of scoring right there. It's pretty bad, but um, you know, nothing that probably can't be fixed. Um, the next cylinder, which we didn't get any compression out of either, um, doesn't look as bad. But if you, I don't know if you can, the camera's showing it, but there is some pretty good scoring in this engine. Uh, in this cylinder. Those lines run down the uh, length of the cylinder. It's a little, they look microscopic to you and I, but they look pretty uh, minimal, but they can be serious. They can seriously take away an engine's ability to build compression in the cylinder. And uh, it just, what I'm looking at as I look at these cylinders, here's one where, you know, we've got some um, issue about halfway down um, a little bit more wear than normal. And looking also here, and then this one is the most interesting one. We had pretty good uh, compression in this one. Uh, and this is the one that I noticed when we you know, first pulled the head off that had some rust, and that dark area you see right there is where the rust was. It has pitted out, the rust has, has put some small pitting on the inside of the cylinder. So. You know, we're looking at a repair there of some kind, but then you also see the linear scoring marks all the way down that cylinder. It shouldn't be like that. Um, there's some more of this. Uh, there's some more of this uh, uh, pitting right there from rust. So both, the, and this is number six cylinder. So number six cylinder and number one cylinder at the same relative position. Uh, all the time. So they're either both up, both down, or you know, in, in, in between. And uh, so these were both at probably, you know, that lower position uh, down there where you see that pitting when we tried to turn the engine over. We're looking at minimum a valve lapping where we just sort of pretty them up. We're looking at a minimum, uh, you know, if we want to, if we decide we want to go that far, if we can, a reboring of the cylinders. This engine has been rebuilt before I can tell. And uh, so 
And the thing that really strikes me about it is really, really dirty. I mean, the oil was filthy. And uh, if you look inside of these oil journals and water jackets, they are full of crud. I mean, it's real bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it has not been well cared for. And you can see the dirt that's piled up inside of these. I mean, the literal dirt. This uh, exhaust port right here is uh, where the uh, little acorn pieces were. So apparently, and you know, over time, humid air got up in here, caused things to rust out. Same thing on this one because it was in the same relative position. And uh, then, of course, when we turned the engine over, we sort of broke things loose. And it appears we did so catastrophically. So and before I remove these valves, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, oven cleaner and uh, spray it on here because I want to sort of want to clean this area up. I want to check the block for cracks. Um, I want to see what's going on perhaps with these valve seats, stuff like that before I go too far. I'm sorry, folks, I lost battery there. Anyway, um, I, I mean, some of you may know this. Um, when you take an engine in, uh, to have it machined, an engine block. They stick it in a caustic solution, which is basically hot water and lye, and uh, that cleans up the grease. Well, um, you know, maybe a lot of us didn't know that oven cleaner is nothing more than lye. So you can use oven cleaner to clean an engine because uh, it's the same stuff pretty much. Anyway, I want to clean up these um, valves a little bit, valve seats, and then I want to put a thin, layer of oil right around the valve seats turn the crank the uh, the camshaft here and uh, see how uh, those valve seats react and take a you know like a magnifying glass to them if the valve seats move at all when pressure is applied to them from the valve it could be a good indicator that the valve seats need to be replaced I'm just sort of diagnosing what's going on with this engine before we decide how far we're gonna go with it I would love to be able to just, you know, slap it back together with some new rings and uh, get it back uh, going again, because that's the cheapest solution. At the same time, I want the engine to be reliable and last a little while, because we're going to have to rely on it in a remote location at contentment. So, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to go too cheap and uh you know not have a reliable engine at the same time you know it's an old backhoe i don't want to do too much so um this is all part of just trying to figure out how we want to go with it so i'll leave that on there let it sit for i don't know probably 24 hours clean it off and uh see how these valves are behaving. well folks i think i understand why better why we didn't have any compression in cylinder two and i think it's because this this exhaust valve here is stuck open you'll see I, i'll turn the crank and now the intake valve is opening but the exhaust valve remains up one should be open one should be closed um they should not both be open like that at the same time but as you can see as i run the camshaft through its that valve doesn't move at all and uh so I don't know what our problem is here. We could have a bent valve or just a sticking one. We'll have to take a closer look. Mm -hmm. If this valve is stuck open all the time, there won't be any compression. Concoction here around the uh, valves. I'm gonna turn the crank, see if I can see anything unusual. There are little metal ring inserts here that are called valve seats that seat this valve against it to try to get a nice airtight fit for compression sale. And sometimes these seats over time, they can become loose. They can begin to wall around just a tiny bit inside there. And if they do, it means it should be replaced. Okay, I don't see any movement in the, don't see any movement in the seat. So that's good. Okay. Okay, so no problem. This engine has been rebuilt before. 
these cylinders have been bored out an extra 30 thousandths of an inch. Um, and uh, we know that because we know what the diameter of these cylinders is supposed to be. And we uh, put a, uh, a, a bore gauge in there to measure the, the current diameter. It's approximately 30 thousandths of an inch bigger on, on each one. The, the question I have is whether or not we need to rebore these cylinders again because of the shape they're in, or whether we can get away with just putting this back together with some new rings and going down the road and seeing what we get. Um, hard to say how long an engine, how long new rings and an engine will last uh, if you put them in without reboring the cylinders, uh, particularly if the if the cylinders have gained a little extra size from wear since the last boring, and these have. I can begin to pull uh, these lifters and springs and valves out, get a closer look at them, maybe uh, measure them and uh, see what kind of shape they're in. How do you take those out? Oh, good, I, good question. Get a clamp on it, clamp it here, put a clamp on top of the valve there. It holds the valve in place while it squeezes the spring. Oh. And then there's a little set of keepers here that you simply pull out or let fall out. And then you s gently and slowly re release the spring. Hmm. And, uh, and uh, then you can slide the valve out. You can just pull it out and then you can remove the spring. And then these lifters here will pull right out. Hmm. Then we can remove the camshaft and get a look at it. Let's do it. Let's get to it really super be duper fast. This is interesting. The um, who's that pick? right there. Okay. This is interesting because the intake valves have this little hole with a pin that goes through it which holds the spring in place. But the exhaust valves have a traditional collet, you know, a little two-piece collet that holds the spring in place. I I wasn't expecting to see this. Three-step valves. My goodness. <laughs> 